going to just start talking. Just get my shit together. It's just weird to start from a standing stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to start from like two minutes ago and then go through this start just because it would be funnier. Uh, we have to. We have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And here we go. Hugh, how's it going, mate? I'm good. Thank you, Shorto. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Really well. I'm, uh, I know I was excited for Miami Vice, but I am really excited for Dukes of Hazard. You know what, mate? This one, I don't. I, I'm not as ex, like I'm not as excited about the Dukes. As I, I haven't got like a a feeling about it. So I think underlying that, I might be pleasantly surprised with it because my gut feel is like I don't think it's going to be that good. So yeah. um, you know, when you go into something with slightly low expectations, you can often get surprised. So um, yeah, I, I I'll be interested to see what I think of this one because you're you're really looking forward to it, aren't you? I am. And it's going to be one of those situations where I'm building it up so much that you are going to hate it. Uh, and uh, okay. I, think, I think that's why we take an average of our reviews anyway, our scores. So the score will reflect, you know, the opinion. I'm, I maybe am overselling it a bit. And the reason for that, I think, is very much entrenched in what this show was about. And I'll read the description of the show. But for a lot of people, maybe in my position, my age or within, let's say, a 20 year bracket uh, it, from the United States. This is an iconic show. This is this is a cultural icon in America, and this is something that I think every, especially to take a look at, you know, similar to a team. Um, I would say in America, this was equal to, if not a greater icon or a, or a much more iconic show than a team. It's an arguable point, um, but it's interesting because I think it's it's very culturally different as far as how it's taken in this country. I don't know that it took off or or was uh, televised much over here. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I was still quite young in the 80s, so I'm not sure. I watched A-Team, but I didn't watch Dukes of Hazard. I, I was aware of it, though, so I, I kind of back up your point. I knew, I knew the vehicle, and I've heard of them. I just, I didn't know whether I just wasn't exposed to it or whether it just wasn't pushed as much. Well, I'm going to uh, just get a little bit, um, just going to find here a bit of a, I had, and I lost it. going to edit that out. Let me find it. I wanted to read a brief description for you from IMDb. Let's run tomatoes have one. Um, as an introduction for you. The Dukes of Hazard is an American action comedy television series that was aired on CBS from the 26th of 20, sorry, January 26, 1979 to February 8th, 1985. So right around the time 18 was out, uh, Miami Vice was out. So we're still hitting actually those early 80s time periods with it. Uh, the show aired for 147 episodes spanning seven seasons, so it wasn't a fly-by-night show, not like a Thunder in Paradise one-hit wonder. Um, well, one season. I wouldn't say one-hit wonder necessarily. Uh, it was consistently among the top-rated television series in the late 1970s, at one point ranking second to Dallas. So I don't know. If, I think Dallas was quite popular here, which immediately followed the show on and are on. Sorry which immediately followed the show on CBS, CBS's Friday night schedule and Friday night, um, Friday night. I think when I got older, wasn't like a primo time slot. Thursday was the time slot you wanted, but Friday night was a good time slot for family oriented TV. And the Dukes of Hazzard right. was very much something that, um, you know, children loved it. Adults could get into it as well. The show is about two young male cousins, Bo and Luke Duke, who live in rural Georgia and are on probation for moonshine running. The young men and their friends and their female cousin, Daisy Duke, very iconic character that I think every Brit probably can recognize. Would you say so, Daisy Duke? Uh, no, I don't know. So have you heard of the... the? I've heard of her, but... Have you heard of the... the so the, I guess she, her image spawned a female fashion trend called the Daisy Dukes, the, the jean shorts that were cut really high. Oh, no, but I like the sound of it. Okay, there you go. So that's in the show. Um, ah, okay. So, so we've got you hooked. Um, the young men and their friends and their female cousin, Daisy Duke, and other family, such as patriarch Uncle Jesse, who's very key in the show, have various escapades as they evade the corrupt law officers, Boss Hogg and Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. The young men drive a customized 1969 Dodge, Dodge Charger named the General Lee, which became an iconic symbol of the show. The series was inspired by the 1975 film Moonrunners about a bootlegger family, which was also created by Guy Waldron and had many identical or similar character names and concepts. 
The show was the basis for a film of the same title in 2005, which you didn't see that either, did you? No. So that's an overview of the Dukes of Hazard. Um, so the, the show, as we've been doing, I've been picking the top show. This is the second show on IMDb. The top show, I believe, was a Christmas episode. And I, I don't feel like it's a good time for Christmas stuff just yet. So I went with the second one down. Um, cool. But yeah. So are you ready to jump in and watch the Dukes of Hazard? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Let's start from the top. So, so why don't we do a few things here? Why don't we do a quick summary of where we are from the plot? And then, uh, because I just want to make sure we're up, we know where we are up to speed so far. So we had two pe- we had three people coming into town, uh, one of which uh, looks very much like a criminal mastermind. And they have a, um, a bank job, effectively, where they're going to be robbing the banks in, in, in the Georgia vicinity, so all, all around the Atlanta area. Um, they've run into the Dukes. They've, they, for some reason, have taken the Dukes, the Jesse, Daisy, Bo and Luke, Boss Hog, and the two police officers of Hazard, and they've got them in the boar's nest. So we don't know what's happening right now. We know that they have a bank job, and for some reason, they're collecting people that may have an impact on the success of this mission. Civilized? You call keeping five people penned up civilized? How long are you going to keep us here? Only as long as it takes the armored car from Atlanta to get to Mr. Hogg's bank here this afternoon. You're going to hijack it? Of course. Now listen, you're just wasting your time. Let me tell you, all that truck is dropping off is $2,000 in small change for my penny arcade. That show ain't gonna go far split four ways. That has us only the first stop. You see, the car will also be transferring funds from the Federal Reserve Bank in Atlanta to Charlotte, North Carolina. $10 million. $10 million? I don't know where he's getting his information that the, the Dukes of all the you know, residents in um, Hazard are going to be problematic on this endeavor. Um, but for some reason, they have captured the Dukes and they've captured Boss and Bosco, Daisy, Jesse, and um, Cletus. Uh, have I missed anything? Is that where we're at with the plot? No, I think that's a really good summary. I, I will add as well, as I was watching that, I thought, what's the hazard about? I don't understand. Like I said, the Dukes, okay, I get. Well, what's the? Ha- I don't understand the hazard bit. And then they said the the, the county of hazards. Like, ah, yeah. Okay. So hazard is um, it, for me. What what one of the things I like about this show is hazard is this fictitious place in the South that looks so podunk, that looks so far out in the sticks. Most of the roads aren't even paved. Uh, you know, and it was funny. The thing I like too. Um, just going back to it. There was a point where the narrator, who was played by, and I'll actually, let me double back to that in a second, even made it a point to make fun of the show. Y'all may have noticed that the Hazard folks don't think this is too much out of the ordinary. It takes a lot to stir them up. Referencing the cars, just driving insanely through these small towns. Uh, Narrator, played by, uh, interestingly, stop saying that. Is anybody watching this? I said, I just want to point this out for everybody watching this. I watched the Miami Vice review. I said, interestingly, like 12 times. It's an embarrassment to me. It's stopping right now. Um, interestingly, the narrator of this show is played by Waylon Jennings. So he is a famous, very famous country music singer in America. Oh. For, uh, so we, we're, we're looking at a, a voice that's well-known, a musician that's well-known, and his voice is, is chocolate. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe not as much, but pretty similar to mine. <laughs> but you're—I think you're on point. The narrator for me is the best part of the show, and he's great. How, how he? Because I—I think the, the show itself, and we'll go into a bit more detail on the actual uh, review side of things. But I think he really carries the plot line well. Yeah, and and the way he does it, it's not just a narration; it's a narration with somebody reacting uh, as as sort of that first person perspective, and I love yeah. that. Yeah, that's that is unique and, and it is a nice it is a nice touch. We've not seen that on the other uh, uh, TV programs yet, have we? So, and I don't recall one like that. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, it, I'm really fascinated to hear you talk about all this stuff. All right, why don't we uh, go on to the next scene? Let's go. Man, I just hate it when Daisy's in trouble. So the plot thickens. Kind of. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) So so here's where we've gotten to. So 
they've captured the Dukes, they've captured the police, they've captured Boss Hog. They've quite cleverly had Boss Hog uh, release a public service announcement to ask all residents of Hazard to stay inside because they are going to be spraying for a fruit fly of some sort. Due to a sudden invasion of the Abyssinian fruit fly, the Department of Agriculture is conducting an aerial insect spraying this afternoon. All residents must evacuate the town of Hazard by 3 o'clock this afternoon under penalty of law. Uh, in order to be able to do their their bank heist without much interference from John Q. Public. And the Dukes are trying to find a way to get out. The bad guys are being quite, um, I guess, charitable with allowing them just to converse. He even said at one point, why don't you guys get together and discuss plans for escape? Um, and they've remembered now that there is a underground tunnel that JD and Uncle Jesse, which I didn't realize that they used to run shine together, uh, used to use, and they're trying to get the Dukes into this tunnel to escape. I think my question is, if, let's say, the bad guys could just say, well, where, where's Bo and Luke Duke? They're not here. If they're not back, I'm going to shoot you dead. Uh, exactly. Like the same so, tactic that they did earlier. Al although th that was addressed because they did say, uh, we need to give them a good reason to know you're in there and want to keep you in there. So maybe that's coming. Uh, yeah, fair. Uh, but that's that's where we are. So it's it is just sort of ticking along right now. Yeah, no, I've enjoyed it though. So let's see what happens next. So I think when we last revisited the Dukes uh, in the last scene, they had an idea to use these moonshine tunnels, and we didn't know how they were going to go about doing that because if they ran off, Uncle Jesse was going to get shot. That was sort of the the understanding. So what ended up happening, and and I believe this was this is a Fairly good overview of what we've seen. So what we did see happening is the Dukes created such a fuss uh, that Ross, sorry, that Boss Hog was able to convince the bad guys, lock them in a cellar. Uh, Mr. Uh, what's your name? And thank you for giving me a chance to tell these roughnecks that we could all have been killed while they was trying to escape for the second time. We almost made it, too. That's right. See that? They ain't learned a thing. They're dangerous. I want them two boys locked up and locked up now. Yeah, not totally unrealistic. I agree. Yeah, I mean, there was a little bit of a stretch, but the way they set it up, actually, I thought was pretty good. Um, and I, yeah, I got no complaints with that. So that that did satisfy my my curiosity. I'm curious to see how the bad guys in the next scene are going to pass off as Boss Hog and Roscoe. So maybe it's a good idea if I explain that last piece, as I forgot to summarize that. So where are we? The Dukes are currently locked in the boar's nest with Roscoe and Cletus. Meanwhile, the main bad guy and his number two head into town and pick up the money drop-off from the armored car, impersonating Boss and Roscoe. I have no idea why they decided to dress in Boss and Roscoe's clothes, as the people dropping off the money clearly didn't know what Boss and Roscoe looked like in the first place. Back at the Boar's Nest, the Dukes had managed to get their way to the end of the tunnel and had almost hacked their way out of a concreted up wall. Just before they were able to escape, the henchmen overseeing them were able to catch them in the act. However, the Dukes, being adept at dodging bullets and diving at people, were able to take control of the situation and catch up with the bad guys in the General Lee. Bo Duke, after they catch up with the armored car, decides to take on a maneuver that can be described as courageous, maybe a little reckless, and most definitely shirtless, jumps onto the armored car, makes his way to the front, and uses his magical flannel shirt to incapacitate the vehicle. Once the vehicle's pulled over, Bo and Luke take charge of the situation, capturing the bad guys, and all is right in Hazard once again. Dukes of Hazard. There we go. So uh, I, I think watching that, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to rate this, because I think it was... At the same time, not one of the best episodes I've seen, but there was elements of it that I thought were really good and actually better than some of the episodes I've seen in the past. Okay. Uh, what, where where does it sit with you, I guess, your initial impressions? Well, for me, I don't have the uh, nostalgia. So with a team like you in this show, I just grew up on mm -hmm. it. So kind of whatever watching it, it just bring back all these like floods of amazing feelings of watching it. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I knew the characters and I had the the car and the figures and stuff. So I didn't have that. This is just straight from scratch. With um, Thunder and Paradise, I've got Hulk Hogan. So I have not yeah. seen that before, but you had the Hulkster, which was just, um, that was special in itself. And I really loved that episode. Uh, Miami Vice was just, you know, it's just a different cut across yeah. all of what we've watched so far. And it was just far better quality and actually really engrossing. So this is just a different a different comparison for me. Uh, for me, uh, it would be judged lower than what we watched so far just because I, of that fact, if I'm being honest. I, I could imagine if I watched that when I was younger, I would have loved it. And um, there were elements of it that I really liked. Some of it were, were like a little testing, but... Um, Overall, it had a very similar feel to watching it like A Team. It was just like warms your cockles. It's nice and easy, easy to follow. Silly, like the the rater I thought was brilliant. Yeah. Um, the uh, it's a bit too much kind of car sliding for me. Like that is, I, I imagine that is like the thing. That is like you know the real premise of the episodes are like this car, the car kind of chasing. So it's all right watching a little bit of that, but it's a little bit much. Um, the comedy was a little bit too slapstick for me, like Cletus and whatever his name was, the other cop and Boss Hog. They were just like ridiculous. Um, but <laughs> yeah, just a very good family friendly uh, uh, program. Really, really solid overall. Where, where it, when we look at this episode in comparison, let's say with other episodes I've seen in the past, I think it doesn't do justice to the characters of Roscoe and Boss Hogg. I thought Boss Hogg was more of a caricature than he was in any episode I've ever seen. And oh, Roscoe, okay. his character, and if you were to ask me before watching this, who's who's the best acted character? It would be Roscoe. Oh, he really? Is, yeah. And that's that's why I think we're missing elements with this show. And this is sometimes it is, you know, we we gotta compare them based on the same metrics. This is a, a, a show that people have viewed and said, this is one of my favorite episodes of Dukes of Hazard. I probably would say it's mid tier for me because when right. Roscoe and boss hog are versus the Dukes to me, it's more entertaining. That being said, there is more car chases in those episodes. There's more cars sliding. There's more car jumping in those episodes because they're always driving from a to B and chasing each other. So you, in a way, the thing I think that would bother you, you would see more of in a traditional Dukes of Hazard, so that may be a detriment to your scoring. If we had a different episode to share, like the sliding doesn't bother me. It's just it doesn't do it for me. It doesn't like. It, I prefer the um, the shitty fight scenes that are totally yeah. unrealistic. I, I like that more. Um, the the car sliding. Once you've seen it slide a few times, it's just I don't get excited by it. I'm not like. Uh, if anything, it's like slightly boring. Like I just don't, I don't hate it, but it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. If that makes sense. Yeah. I do think though, that this show, even using this example stands out in a few, few areas to me. And you yeah. may, you may take some of these points and think they sound ridiculous. I actually think the acting in this is pretty good for the type really? of show it is. So okay. I'm, I'm looking at it as, so if you compare that Linus character that we talked about in the Miami Vice review to anybody who hasn't watched it, please watch the Miami Vice review. We'll put links at the end of the video. But in the Miami Vice review, Linus it was just a joke character. If you look at Roscoe, Cletus, and Boss, and they're going to be the examples of bad acting, because I don't think you can take Bo and Duke and say they did a terrible job as actors in that. No, I don't think I, I you think can say bad. that about Daisy yeah. or Jesse. I think they did quite good. I thought the bad guys were average uh they're not there to be the the central point but boss roscoe and cletus if you were to put them in a um stage show with the way they were acting they were acting very purposefully very in a very caricature way it wasn't it was very committed i guess the acting that is and, true. and if when i go back to look at the other episodes and i have to be a bit more disciplined here because i'm going to judge it my score for this show that I'm going to give today is going to be lower than what I probably rate the show because I didn't okay. enjoy this episode as much. So I'm going to be honest to that, that my my love of this show is probably greater than that of Death in Paradise and Mommy Vice. However, I don't know that my score is going to be be up as, as the top score. So we're, we're comparing these things on episode by episode. Um, but for me, the acting of Boss, Roscoe, and Cletus is actually quite good. In, in what they're trying to pull off with a caricature character. 
No, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, I, I think you, you got a valid point there. I, I find it like a little much what they're doing, but like it's a little frustrating even at times. But I got to give it credit that it, it it's all in, isn't it? They're not like they're not half caricature. They are caricature to you know to the bitter end. All of them. Yeah, because uh, the the Roscoe character in it is very funny in other episodes. In this one, he's a bit over the top. And what bothered me in this episode, um, and this episode is probably more believable as far as plot line is concerned than a lot of the other ones that are there. Even if you compare that to the A-Team episode we saw, I would argue that this episode was more believable than the A-Team uh, episode that we saw as far as some of the, the, the plot. Um, but Boss Hog eating the way he was eating through the entire episode was painful it was like hard to watch it was i he must have i wonder i at one point i debated on whether we should try to calculate the number of calories he had <laughs> in every scene. it was insane like he couldn't go like the whole time it was just like and from a director standpoint i would have loved to have seen a director just come in and say yes you are stress eating and we got the joke out of the way early doors you do not need to keep eating in every single scene through the entire show yeah, um, I, I agree with that. That was it, it. Kind of got to me as well after. And I'm a fan of the show. Uh, the other thing, the, the only other, and, and this is me nitpicking, and this is why I think the plot actually for a show of this ilk was strong in its plausibility. There's only one thing that bothered me in the plot, really, um, and that was when Bo escaped the first time. And you know, the, the, he, Uncle Jesse kicked the chair and he ran out. I thought those scenes were plausible for the period not necessarily plausible but i thought you you could get away with it and he gets away and you know he he's shot at and then he he manages to dodge not dodge the bullets but he manages to not it's not easy to shoot someone i don't think on the run um and then after they come back to ensure they don't do it again they show off how good how good of a sharpshooter the guys are after he just shot i think about eight or nine bullets in the direction of bow and didn't hit him once and now Bo's supposed to be threatened by the fact that he can shoot bottles standing still. That bothered me a little bit. And there was no like learning from it. Like, okay, they they ran away. They got away last time. Let's tie them up. Let's keep them away from each other. Let's stop them talking and making plans. <laughs> like the realism <laughs> of that was ri ridiculous. Although I, I would say, uh, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say the part I would slightly disagree is that how he got away that first time with kicking the back of the chair. I mean, as so you take over this bar, this situation, you've got hostages, and you're sitting down with your back to them where one person can come and approach you from behind, tap you on the shoulder as you're sitting down, and kick the back of your chair away. I mean, it's like, from an um, intelligence perspective, it was it was awful, like awful planning to mm. be like approached from behind. But again, what I prefer about this is that it was it's so blatantly a comedy. It's an action comedy. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's about a bit of silliness and a bit of action. And, yeah. You know, if anything, like when we watch Thunder in Paradise or A-Team, it wasn't meant as a comedy. It just is because some of it's so bad. This is just square in the face of comedy. Like it's the, it, yeah. he's trying to be, it is stupid. And the, the character, some of those characters and the caricatures in particular kind of like put that across. Now, for me, those caricatures aren't funny. It's it's more of the other stuff, but um, uh, you know th this is a slightly different take on, on those uh, other programs that we watched, and I kind of I give it credit for that. It is for for me, and and what I took away from it watching it again is how original this show is. Where yeah, you, I think that's fair. You look at A Team uh, and Miami. Miami Vice was very original, but it was a police was procedural original. drama, and it was yeah. original in in not so much what they did, but how they did it. And when I watched this with my wife, it again, a British person, it was just sort of like, I don't even know how to process all this, uh, which is something I grew up with. So for me, it's not about processing it, but there's no other TV show that's like it that I can think of. And, and even just sort of breaking, what is it, breaking the fourth wall, I guess is what they say with the narrator taking the piss out of the show whilst it's exactly. ongoing. I like um, that. And, and the humor interjection. Uh, we do. I think it's a show that you would have to watch quite a bit to to get a, a greater appreciation of because even Bo and Luke, it was interesting you said that they're you know they're they're brave and they're courageous, but actually they're they're they showed to be quite bright. And I like the scenes where there was there was one episode where uh, somebody was running an illegal gambling ring 
and they hired the Dukes to drive a lorry. And in the back of the lorry was the casino. And that's how they, they were able to get away with it, which was a bit flamboyant of a plot line anyway. But they had, you know, it was these city people coming to Hazard to find these country bumpkins. And the way they played it off was that they acted stupid, but in a really smart way. And, and they're quite switched on. So it's, it's interesting to see their, um, stop saying interesting. <laughs> I'm going to put a counter on, I swear. I like to see. I like seeing their their characters progress because I I do think um, there's just a lot. It was a lot more complexity to the show than I expected, and you can have complexity in a show that's humorous and tongue in cheek, and and it's it's the acting and it's the plot, it's the way they go about it. But the episode for me fell a bit short to my expectations. Yeah, I think that's what. And to be honest, I. I I liked elements of it. I didn't like other elements of it. And because I ha I haven't um, I got that nostalgia benefit, it's going to be a lower marking. It's the lowest yeah. marking out of, the, out of the lot that I've seen. But I could imagine if I watch it back in the day or, or watch more of them, more of the episodes, I would definitely warm to it and some of the characters. Yeah. I, I, I would – I want to give it a score that's greater than the 18, but I can't because we're judging it on this okay. episode. Um, I'm, but I want to give it credit for my views on the acting. I want to give it credit for my views on, um, the originality and the, the narration I think is worth a lot of credit. And yeah. even like the other things to look at, uh, not so much, I think with a team, it gets a bit lazy, um, with some of the, uh, you know, the lumberjacks all wearing cliche lumberjack clothes i think the set design and you know the, the the whole hazard setup and it does transport you to this redneck place when you're there this sort of hillbilly backwater town and it does a really good job of this and that's something that i do look for in a show so for me i'm going to give it credit for that i'm 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 thinking in the seven six range what was my, what was the score for a team a team was eight to five yeah, mine's gonna be lower than that. I I'm gonna get. What was your score for Hazard? Seven six, and that's me being generous because I, I would. If you were asking me to score the show, I would probably score the show higher than a team in Miami Vice. Miami Vice is a close one, but I definitely would score it higher than a team. Um, however, on the show, I have to be honest about it and say seven six for me. Yeah, I would probably go around seven seven and a half. Um... Overall, I think uh, let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt and go seven and a half. I think seven and a half is fair. So Dukes of Hazard is seven and a half. I'm going to put up our graphical view of that. So let's see how these compare. Uh, here I've made a graphic actually for this. Oh, that's yeah. This will be good to see the, the visual. Yeah. So I've, I've made a visual. Um, so here is our scoring system. There we go. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that really yeah. spells it out, doesn't it? It does. So Dukes of Hazard is coming in third on that list. Um, I I really I really worked hard to find one that I thought would be a good example. But you know, if if it's a good show, I think every show should stand on its own merits. And Dukes of Hazard, good show, but I think I feel a bit let down by the episode that we saw. Uh, well, I think that's a that's a fair assessment. It's again, I'm looking at it through different uh, different lenses, um, having not seen it, and I can see. Uh, I, I kind of agree with everything that you said. I can't really disagree with too much. Um, the narration on it stands out um, above everything we've seen. That was like the real gem for me. It was just like you said, it even takes the piss out of the show itself, and even though it almost doesn't need explaining, it kind of tells you what's happening next. It kind of keeps the flow going and breaking <laughs> up the scenes. It's, and the guy's voice is so cool. The way he delivers it is brilliant. Like he, he's kind of top notch. Like yeah. So I think that was well worth pointing out. Um, I maybe don't agree with you as strongly on the acting, not that it was terrible, but I kind of, I see your point on it. Um, but I think seven and a half is, is a, a fair score and it would definitely have the potential to go up if we watch other episodes. Yeah. But um, I think I could say the same thing about 18 though. For, for me, I, I, you know, I think we, I could have probably scored that higher. Um, so there's not huge amounts of difference in it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Dukes of Hazard 7.5. We need to decide what is next on the plate. I've chosen the last one. Uh, do you want to pick the next one? Well, we mentioned Batman. And mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I think that if we, you know, we're doing an alternating one, that one does excite me because I do remember now that I think we are looking at potential 70s, aren't we? That was, uh, I mean, I could be wrong, it could be 80s, but it doesn't that, have to be 80s. I think it's vintage reviews is what we're doing. That that I remember as one of the first kind of TV programs as well. And it, it was one of the first films that I watched Batman as well. So mm. what do you reckon? I'm up for Batman. I'm up for it. That's that's going to be an interesting yeah. one. I could see that scoring quite high. I can't. Um, I'm super excited about that already. Yeah, I'm curious to see when we get into, I think 7.5 for me when we look at Dukes is the bottom of good. And uh, then I think, yeah, once, I, agree. I, I think once we get into the sixes, we're saying you, you get credit for right. trying. But yeah. once we get into the sixes, and I think five is like, nah, and then below five, anything four is just not good. And to yeah, what five, degree? Three. Yeah. So, all right, well. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, if you've made it to this point, God bless you. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to follow us on social media, we do have social media. We have our Twitter and Periscope, go. Bearded Philoso, our Facebook page, which I haven't looked at in about a month, Bearded Philosophy. And I have created an Instagram account uh, at Bearded Philoso <laughs> one. I am any week going to be posting photos <laughs> any week. So, <laughs> I'll be so you know, disappointed when you actually do that, mate. I'm stand by that. So, I really don't want no, no. to ever. Uh, well, no, it's it's got to happen, Hugh. We have to. It just you know, it, we just have to get the timing right. It's a marketing <laughs> thing. So just we want to strike while the iron's hot. I love so, that. Like, we've got a Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even looked at this. For the last <laughs> you basic. You might as well put across the bottom. <laughs> Don't bother getting contact. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, if, if if shit goes down, I'll get notified. Don't bother contact. I know you want to. Re- if you want to reach out, don't fucking bother. That's our message. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we want to stay very on brand here. You, oh, God. <laughs> we're not social media magnates here. No shit. <laughs> so uh, yeah. anyway, yeah, we look forward to engaging with you. <laughs> In the next few weeks. Uh, anyway, thank you everybody for joining in. Hugh, we're going to go on to the after show. I need to top up my beverage. Thank you all for joining. And next week we have Batman. So look forward to Boom. that. Take care, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>